Oh, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. Here I am. Okay, today I'm going to do uh, permissions in Linux, and that kind of covers Unix 2. And the reason why I'm doing this is one, if you don't know much about permissions, you may be able to have some issues resolved by what I explain here if you're new to Linux or other types of Unix. This, this could apply to FreeBSD, I suppose. And um and NetBSD or whatever Unix you happen to use, and um, for the more experienced users, I'm gonna just go into some things that, that are interesting uh, that I found just in my looking at my uh, multi-boot computer here, where I got all these different installations set up. Got I'm, I'm hiccuping like a pirate. This is my Sam Pellegrino here. Okay, so, where do I start? I don't know. Um, I guess that um, I'll start with SUSE that I'm booting into. And I guess I'll explain a few things. Okay, so we've got our... Uh, for every user in Linux, there is... Um, there is each person has their own private directory to store their things in, and that's usually the directory usually named by your your login name, and it rests under the home directory. Whereas the administrative user that usually always comes set up by default, except for if you're using Ubuntu, will have a home directory called root. So if someone logs in it as, as administrator or root, same thing, then um, they're able to. You know, the, they can save documents in their home directory as well. Now, unless root gives another user permission to access those files, they won't be able to see it. And the same thing goes for other other users who may use the computer. Uh, Linux was first designed with the idea in mind that more than one person would share one computer, and there'd be a bunch of terminals hooked up to it, and each person would log in, and each would have their own privacy, basically. But files could also be shared. You could always grant other people permission to read the file on a on, on a on a group level. And you can let someone else join your group. Um, and most of the time, um, all the users are in the users group, <laughs> and so um, you can you can let. The, you, the, you can grant yourself permission. You can you can deny yourself permission to read, write, or execute a file, but chances are you won't do that. You can let other people that are not in your group read, write, or execute the file. And execute just means run a program in layman's terms, I guess. And uh, members of the group, you can also grant to members of the group. So if you if you want to have a file that you're just going to share between you and one other person, but you have ten other people sharing the same computer, you might create uh, a group for just you and this friend and grant, you know, make the owner of that file on the group level be for whatever group you just made. Uh, the, um, <laughs> the Love and Herbs and Spices group, you know, of Colonel Sanders and his, uh, his investor, you know, <laughs> whatever. So, um, you can name it whatever you want. And I guess I'll try to show this uh, a little more graphically now. Dun dun dun! Here comes Susa Linux. Okay. So, let's say here's some of my videos here, right? So I right click on property. I don't even know, am I catching that? Good. Then we got permissions. So we have an owner, group, and others. So Members of my group can read that file, but also others, anybody, I mean, it's anybody in the world, if they could log, if they can get to my computer, they had no login credentials, but somehow get to this file, they would be able to read the file, but they wouldn't be able to write to it, which means alter it. They, and they wouldn't be able to save it after making alterations. They could actually alter it, but they can't save it after making alterations. And it's saying the file is executable, which is kind of silly. I don't know why a video file would be executable, but that's the way the program created it. I'm not going to mess with it. Okay. And here it says the user is Jack, which is the username I've done to log in. And okay. So if you try to execute a program 
say you download a, a program to install to to compile. You know, you're trying to get you know you, you've got your Linux installed for whatever reason. You've been convinced you need to download the source code of some program, and you find out that um, you need to compile this thing. So you, you know you, you know you, you look up on the web page, you see some instructions. You don't know what they mean, but you just type the things, and it and it, and it, comp it, says it compiles. You know, it, you type configure, and you type make, and everything seems to be okay. But then you change the directories and go into that that folder. And you did this as root, by the way. And you go into that folder, you try to run the program, and it's, it won't run. Well, it's because you're not the owner of the program, so you can't run it. And there's a lot of programs that come into, um, they're in Linux, that you can't run unless you, you own it. Unless you're root, actually. So you have to change over to root to, to get it to work. And that could be, um, and there's some files you can't change unless you're root. AKA the administrator, like the file systems tab, which I'll get into a little bit in this whole discussion. Now, in my setup, I have it so I'll just show everybody. I, I've even though SUSE comes with um, the HAL daemon and HAL setup for me, um, it really didn't. I really couldn't figure out how to use HAL to get the other hard disks to uh, be accessible by me as a user. So I decided just to go ahead and edit. Uh, file systems tab, which is uh, the file called fstab in the etc directory, which is up here, and I'm going to show everybody the contents of that, and I'll get into mount points a little bit. So go down here is there's fs tab. Boy, why did that change? Okie dokie. Alrighty then, let's start over again. Alright, no, I'm not going to do it that way. This is a little bit too confusing. I'm going to get my one from Ubuntu. Um, so you can see the end result before it happens. Unless, of course, I don't have it set up. I should be doing this in Ubuntu. Or, guess what? I can set my file system tab right now and you can learn about it. Sound good? Sound good? Okay, let's do that. Let's be impromptu. Good. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to open up my file systems tab file, and I guess I'll go into. God, a lot of depth here, I guess. Could be a little overwhelming. Okay. First off, for, for my purposes, I have no idea what anything below that proc line means, and so I'm not going to try to explain it. Now, I have a situation where I can boot into various operating systems and I'm going to want to be able to get to my files that are in the other ones sometimes when I'm in a different one, right? Each operating system takes up a, a different space on the hard disk and I've already explained that I, that yeah, how the, how the hardware abstraction layered service is running called the, the HAL Demon is running in the background and if I, you know, go ahead and I plug in my uh, even see if I can see. I guess I can see it. Uh, my <coughs> USB drive here. In fact, maybe I'll just do that. Get this damn dolphin out of the way. Into the drive. Of course, this one time it won't work. But anyway, I'll just pop. Actually, why am I doing that? <laughs> Don't have three hands, folks. Use my mouth. Get out of here, kid. You bother me. Okay, so that's in there. And guess what? It says I have a new volume. So let's click on that, and open it up the file manager, and expose ourselves. So on these other hard disks that I that I place in, uh, basically um, I could easily insert it, and then I can also eject it safely. Done. Where's that cap I spit it out? Right there. Good. There's my old gum. <laughs> I'm gross. Okay, so um, I guess they are, they have something to do with this stuff. Now let's go up here to these first two lines here and take a closer look at the gibberish. All this is saying is that 
this line right here that I've highlighted, it's just a it's a forward slash, really means the the file system for this operating system that I booted into for for SUSE. It's actually the the base of it, right? So I don't I, I can't stand the way um, Dolphin does this. I wonder if I can go into Conqueror. I'm probably okay. Conqueror. Let's see if I can do this now. Let's see if I can go to this. That's a good representation right there. I like that. Okay, see that line there? Okay, these are all the files, the folders that are within my my operating system that I'm in. SUSE, SUSE 11.3, open SUSE, 64-bit. Okay, then here is the home directory I was discussing. There is the user, Jack. Okay, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, up here, uh, I can also mount my other. Um, I've explained what a mount point is first before I get into that fact that I can mount. A mount point is basically a, a place within your file system and the base of my file system starts right there. That little forward slash. To read more of my toxic lemonade. Um, if I were to create a new file folder directory and say if I were to name that Ubuntu, and say I were to edit my file system's tab file and have an entry for Ubuntu, then let's just say I'd be able to get to my files in the Ubuntu directory under most circumstances. There are some other circumstances that I'm going to explain that are that have an impact on my ability to do that. I'm going to uh, take some measures to deal with those uh, factors, but for now I'm going to explain what mount points are. Okay, so uh, now I'm not logged in as a root and I'm not going to close the camera off just to be able to add a directory as root, but I'll do this with my little console here. Um, first of all I'm going to make a directory which will be a mount point. And this mount point, once I've mounted my other uh, partitions, I will be able to access the files on those partitions from within the directory I'm going to create. Get it? Got it? Good. Okay, so, first thing I'm going to do is, since I don't have uh, uh, write permissions on this uh, subdirectory, the base of the file system, I will guarantee it, um, I'm going to have to be root, but I'll demonstrate that I don't have permissions by showing that I'm Jack, a discovery there, and I'm going to try to make a directory, and I'm going to try to call that one uh, Ubuntu 1. I have two Ubuntus installed on this thing. Don't ask. And it says permission denied. Okay, so now I'm going to go in as root. Sudo would work, but I'm not doing that. And of course, I... God, how did I get that wrong? I am the clumsiest typer on the planet. Okay, now I'm brute. Give me the red letters. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. Yes, okay, I'll do a dangerous thing. I will make a directory. And we'll call that Ubuntu 1. Dun, dun, dun. And there it appears, right there. It wasn't there before. It's not magic. It's Linux. Okay. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to add an entry in my file systems tab file to tell the system that I want to mount my Ubuntu directory to that folder so I can access my files there. If I sound like Al Gore, it is not a coincidence. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go into my file systems tab and I have to be root to edit this file. This text file controls the behavior of mounting and unmounting in my system. In, in, in effect, the etc. directory up here is the control panel. So I'm going to do emacs, because I like emacs, etc. fstab. I'm going to press enter, I'm going to pause right here, and I'm going to start with the next one. 